Hello, in this video we will build an USB power delivery source application using the Xcube TCPP software pack. First, we will introduce the software pack and its capabilities. After, we will list the requirements to build the following projects. Then, we will install the software pack and we will start with the first project using the XNucleo SRC1M1 expansion board. Finally, we will show how to build a project based on your own custom board. The Xcube TCPP software pack is dedicated to build USB power delivery applications in sync, source or dual role mode, in standard power range, when the hardware is based on a STM32 MCU with a UCPD peripheral, and with a TCPP product interfacing this MCU to the USB Type-C connector. Using this pack, there is no need to write any line of code and no need for a deep knowledge of the USB Type-C standard. The software pack can help for two hardware configurations. The first consists of a Nucleo and the X Nucleo dedicated to the application to build. The second is a custom board with a STM32MCU embedding the UCPD peripheral and the TCPP product related to the application. Finally, the software pack documentation is available in the Xcube TCPP pack in its documentation folder and is also accessible from CubeMX in the software pack section. Requirements at the software point of view, we will need STM32 CubeMX, at least release 6.11.0, the Xcube TCPP software pack, at least release 4.1.0, an IDE such as STM32 Cube IDE, and for debug, STM32 Cube Monitor UCPD. These software are available on ST.com. At the hardware level, for a project based on an expansion board, we will need the X-Nucleo SRC1M1 and a compatible Nucleo 64, so from series G0 or G4, or a custom board. We will also need a sync device for debug. It can be a real device, like a Bluetooth speaker, or the X-Nucleo SNK1M1 plugged on a Nucleo G0 or G4 with the SYNC firmware. Software Pack Installation Open STM32 CubeMX In the Software Pack area, click on the Install Remove button, select the ST Microelectronics tab, scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP Software Pack, And if it is not already installed, click on the Install button, then click on Close. Project with an expansion board. In CubeMX, in the File menu, click on New Project. Select the Board Selector tab. And in the Commercial Part Number, type your Nucleo Reference. In my case, Nucleo G071RB. Click on it and click on Start Project. Click on Yes. Again, in the file menu, click on Save Project As. Click right to create a new folder and name it SRC1M1. Click on Save. In a pinout menu, click on Clear Pinouts. Click on Yes. Then, in the Software Pack menu, click on Select Components. Scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP Software Pack. Select the Source Application and the Board Support for the XNucleo. SRC1M1. 
There are some warnings. Click on the warning in front of the application for details. So first, the software pack needs a board part TCPP0203. Let's just enable it here. Back to the warnings. The application needs the USB PD middleware. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, the USB PD middleware cannot be selected because it needs an instance of the UCPD peripheral. So, in the connectivity section, select UCPD1 and enable it in source mode. Enable its interrupt and its DMA TX on channel 2 and DMA RX on channel 4. You can choose any DMA channel except DMA channel 1 which is used by the software pack for ADCs. Now let's go back to the USB PD middleware and enable it for this peripheral. The default configuration is OK and in the PDO power data object general definitions we keep the default 5 volt PDO for this example. But you have the possibility to add PDOs depending on your source in the USB power delivery standard power range, so up to 100 watts. This table extracted from the USB power delivery standard explains how to calculate a source PDO value. Back to the software pack. The next warning is due to the need of an RTOS. The software pack is ready for free RTOS and Azure RTOS. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, select free RTOS and enable it in CMC's V1 mode and increase the total lip size to 7000 bytes. Back again to the software pack, there is still a warning which is due to the BSP because it needs HIL drivers for ADC and I2C. Click on OK. In the connectivity section, just select an I2C and enable it. And same thing for ADC in the analog section, just enable one channel of ADC. No need to do their configuration as it will be done by the software pack. Let's check the software pack. There are no more warnings. Click on OK. In the middleware and software pack category, scroll down to reach the XQTCPP software pack and enable the application, the board part, and the board support. In the clock configuration menu, set the clock in PLL mode to set it at its maximum. And in the project manager menu, select your IDE, in my case STM32 cube IDE, increase the minimum IP size to C00, no change in the code generator, and in the advanced settings, Remove the code generation for ADC and I2C as it will be done by the software pack. Right now, it's possible to generate the code, but for debug purpose, we will enable the tracer and GUI interface. In the utilities section, the tracer and GUI interface cannot be selected because it needs a new art. So let's enable the LPU art in the connectivity section. In a synchronous mode, with interrupts, NDMA TX on channel 3. Let's adjust the baud rate to 921,600 bauds. As the Nucleo virtual com port is connected to PA2 and PS3, we map this pin with a left click.
Now in the utilities category, enable the tracer with LPUART1. In the USB PD middleware, set it as tracer source. And back in the utilities section, enable the GUI interface, set a hardware name, for example, Nucleo G071, and a type name, for example, SRC1M1. The configuration is completed. Let's generate the code. Click on Yes. And click on Open Project. CubeIDE has started and imported the project. Let's develop it. Here is the main. In TCPP, there is the application startup. In the USB PD section, there are C files where the software pack wrote the code specific to this source device. In USB TPM user, then USB PDODEF, this file contains PDO definitions with one source device. And here, the table for source PDO with only one PDO, the default 5 volt. And here, the list of sync PDO, which is empty in our case. In drivers BSP, there are the component part and the board support package. And in middleware, FreeRTOS and the USB PD middleware. Now, let's build the application. OK, no error, no warnings. And as I have a board connected to my computer, I can start the debug. OK, this is successful. Now I start STM32 Cube Monitor UCPD. I select the board. Then the port. I start measurements. And now I connect the source to a sync device. We can observe on the right the steps of negotiation. And here we can measure Vibius voltage and current. Now I disconnect the sync device and I reconnect it. Project with a custom board. In CubeMX, in the file menu, click on New Project. In the MCU selector tab, in the commercial part number, type your MCU reference. In my case, it will be STM32G474RE in order to change from previous example. Select it and click on Start Project. Again in the file menu, click on Save Project As. Click right to create a new folder. I will name it SRC and click on Save. Then, in the Software Pack menu, click on Select Components, scroll down to reach the Xcube TCPP Software Pack, and select the Source Application and the Board Part for TCPP 0203. There are some warnings. Click on the warning in front of the application for details. The application need the USB PD middleware and an RTOS. Click on OK. Here, I will go faster as we have already done it in the previous example. First, 
In the middleware and software pack category, the USB PD middleware cannot be selected because it needs an instance of the UCPD peripheral. So let's scroll up to the connectivity section and enable the UCPD1 in source mode. Enable its interrupt and its DMA TX on channel 2 and DMA RX on channel 4. Then enable the USB PD middleware. The default configuration with default 5V PDO is OK for us, but in the PDO general definition, you have the possibility to increase the number of source PDO and to set their values in a PDO source. For the RTOs, enable free RTOs in CMC's V1 mode and increase its total lip size to 7000 bytes. Let's check the software pack. There are no more warnings. Click on OK. Then back in the middleware and software pack category, select the XUTCPP software pack. Enable the application and the board part. There are some warnings in the platform settings. We have to assign resources you have affected on your custom board for each requirement, an ADC, an I2C, an external interrupt input, and a GPIO output. So first, the ADC for the bus. In the analog section, select your IDC and the each channel, in my case ADC1 channel 1, in single ended mode. Adjust the prescaler. Keep 12-bit resolution. Enable continuous conversion mode. And set the sampling time to a medium value. Now let's configure the I2C for the TCPP bus. In my case, I2C1. And just set it in fast mode. Then select an external interrupt input. Configure it in the GPIO category in fully gauge detection with pull up. And set a GPIO output, in my case PC8. And in the software pack, in the platform settings, assign these resources to the application requirements. Then, in the clock configuration menu, set the clock in PLL mode to set it at its maximum. And in the project manager menu, select your IDE, in my case STM32 cube IDE, increase the minimum size to C00, no change for the code generator, no change in the advanced settings. Now it's possible to generate the code. Click on yes. Click on open project. CubeID has started and imported the project. Let's develop it. and build it. This is successful. Now you can debug it on your custom board. To go further, you can refer to the software pack documentation included in the pack itself and also accessible through CubeMX. It also exists tutorial videos like this one explaining step by step how to create a sync or a source application. And finally, you can refer to the XQTCPP page on ST.com for further information. Thank you.